For me personally, Coach Tab has meant everything that a father could be to a player. And he touched me in ways that I, I can't even begin to explain. This memorial, this particular event, is wonderful. But I want to tell you something. You could have buildings, you could have statues, you could have a lot of different things. As I study history, there are a lot of men that people have said that they were great. Only to find that as you find out about them and you read more about them and you begin to talk to people about them, you understand that they're not. This is truly one man that I know that when you look at his track record, everything that they have said about him, he has done. This is truly a man that is worth paying tribute to. And I know that every player that played for him and had the opportunity and the privilege to play for him will attest to that. I am thankful and indebted for a lifetime to Coach Taff and his wife, Donnell, and his family. And I'm thankful for all of my teammates here, for without them, I would not be here. And I'm thankful for God for allowing me to be at Baylor University for the time that I was here to meet all of the men and all of the coaches that Coach Tab had on the staff. I am truly a better man, a better player by coming through Baylor University. And I would hate to think of what my life would be and what kind of ball player I would have been had I not been here at Baylor. Thank you, Coach Taft. Thank you, Donnell. Thank you, your family. Thank you, every Baylor football player here. And may God bless us all. Thank you. Mike is the assistant uh, head football coach, San Francisco 49ers. Uh, he, uh, I predict, will be not only a head coach wherever he chooses to be, the NFL or on a collegiate level, and be a great one because uh, he possesses a passion not only for the game, but for teaching and working as a mentor and changing lives. And this whole dedication today is deeply appreciated. There's so many that have worked on this, that have spent their time there, and last uh, major effort was spent by our president, Bill Underwood, that could allow this to take place. And each one that's participated in, though we don't have the time to point them out, you know who you are, I know who you are, and we thank you from the bottom of our heart for this effort. This started out as a dream, and I said from the first, uh, it wasn't my dream, it was somebody else's, but after I was explained what it was, uh, it became my dream too, because my dream is to honor all those that made a contribution to our 21 years here at Baylor University in football. This included our team doctors, our trainers, our coaches who were magnificent, the support staff, and of course, all of our players. And when I say all of our players, I mean all of our players. There are certain individuals because of their skills and talents that are gonna get a lot of recognition because of their leadership, they're going to be respected in a different way. But there are individuals that contributed to our program through those years that never got in a game. But they were as, as important as any player or any coach because they contributed to the totality of what we were trying to do. And they must not go unrecognized either. The letterman to be honored was my goal because the lettermen represent all of the guys, all of those that have supported and made a contribution to the program. I don't think of this as a Grand Cap Plaza. I like the idea of the, I believe, walkway because I think it's essential that we all believe. First of all, that we have a faith in a power greater than we, and I certainly do. But secondly, that we have a, a faith in this university, what it's accomplished, what it's done through all of these years.
football and all the other sports are just a small window in many ways, and sometimes a big window in which the world views your university. So the representation of the athletes and coaches on the fields of strife represent the university. That's why I want our football teams to be recognized and honored throughout eternity, really. As long as this stadium shall stand, they'll be recognized and honored, and that pleases me. I'm also grateful, of course, to the co-coach life and everything I've ever done, Don Al, our children, our son-in-laws, our grandchildren. Uh, you know, people don't realize that there is a total family contribution when you're in the eye of the tiger. And uh, we spent a lot of years in the eye of the tiger, and uh, my family was resilient, and I'm proud of them, and this honors them as well, if it has my name on it. You know, I told the team last night, we had the 80 team and the 79 team, and we had a brunch this morning and had them, it was fantastic. These guys picked up just like they uh, left off whenever the last time they saw each other. And they reminisced about a lot of things. And last night when I was asked to say a few words, I said simply that there is a truth that's reflected to put words by Edwin Markham. And I love those words because it reflects everything I believe about team and working together and creating something and achieving. And it is, as he said, in his poetic words. There is a destiny that makes us brothers. None of us can go our way alone. That which we put into the lives of others comes back into our home. This is something that's coming back into the lives of our team and our coaches who gave so much a few years ago without any expectation of something great being done for them. This comes back to what you've given to this university. And my plea now is that all of us, fans, athletes, coaches, trainers, managers, we all collectively now need to look to this great university and to those within this university and give back to that. Giving back, it will come back. And it is great when you reach a certain level of maturity in your life and those that you coached as young people become some of your best friends. That's the joy that I have today. I want to thank Ian particularly for pushing this forward and uh, there are several folks on his staff that have done just a great job and we appreciate it and thank you all very much. I'd like to uh, in particular thank the uh, entire Taft family for being with us. It's really a great privilege to have all of you here. Uh, we're so delighted that we could have this event on the weekend where we honor the 1980 team and uh, Mike Singletary, it's particularly great to have you back here and uh, he's been very generous with his time this week. But thank you to all of you for being a part of this, all of those who contributed to this project. This really is a very, very special dedication and a very special part of uh, our facilities as we move forward. I'm going to ask the platform party to please stay with us as we take a few photographs and once again thank all of you for being here and being a part of this occasion. Thanks very much.
90, Marcus Foreman. He's a junior out of Hewitt, Texas, Midway. At defensive end, number 95, Montez Murphy. He's a senior out of Centerville, Illinois. He's St. Louis. And in a backer spot, number 10, Tyler Lindstrom. He's a senior from Omaha, Nebraska. Number 21, at free safety, Maurice Lane. He's a senior from Colleen, Texas, Colleen High School. At our middle linebacker spot, number 34, Colin Allred. He's a senior out of Dallas, Texas, Hillcrest. Number 16, at cornerback, Anthony Arline, number six, junior out of San Antonio, Madison. And playing at Rover, number 18, Willie Andrews. He's a senior out of Longview, Texas, Longview High School. And their partner, number 37, Daniel Sepulveda. He's a junior from Dallas, Texas, played at Highland Park High School.
cleaning this up. Hi Austin. Hi Garrett. Break it. Don't. My fifty. My fifty cents now. Dad, look straight up in the sky. No. Look straight up in the sky, Dad. Look straight down. Look straight up. There's a prison. Austin. Austin? Garrett, where are we? We're in Chicago. No, we're on the train coming home from the White Sox. Well, parade. Parade. Ooh. Even though it likes White Sox. I got Cisco Canerco, Joe Creedy, Juan Uribe, all those guys. Juan Uribe. Ozzy. Did you see Ozzy? Ozzy? No. Yeah, we saw all those guys. Ozzy, 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 Ozzy. Ozzy. And now we're on the train. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Hey Dad, isn't that fun? Dad, we should ask. Dad, we should ask Mrs. Anderson if she. Hey, <laughs> come here, Austin. Whose birthday? Kurt. Whose birthday is it? Mine. Who's? Mine. Mine. It's not your birthday. It's, it's Austin's. The birthday. It's Mine's day. How many candles are on Austin? Three five. <laughs> well, that's Dad. That's my birthday. And no, Austin's your birthday's birthday. not 45. <laughs> Happy birthday, Austin. I love Happy you. Birthday Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And Dad. Happy I birthday, dear like Austin. Like it, Austin. Dad. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to me and Austin. <laughs> 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 Let me sing my own version. Happy birthday to me and Dad. We live in a zoo. We smell like a monkey. And we have a zoo. And you want to go to a zoo. Hey, Mom, let's put 16 on. Okay, blow out your candle.